Welcome back to the dopest show you won't get sick of. I'm Spencer and this is Sasha. I spent most of my 20s in federal prison, but I've been off heroin since April 9, 2010. Got a lot of stories about prison, why it sucks and you don't want to go, but God forbid you do. You won't make some of the same mistakes I made. I want to talk about rule number five today. So, the first three rules are ones most people have heard. Old timers will tell you, don't do drugs, don't gamble and don't mess with punks, okay? That's the standard ones, but on top of that, I've kind of come up with a couple of other ones that I think are pretty important. Rule number five is pretty much when, if and when the time comes when somebody tries you or crosses a line, you need to fight. You need to fight because the rest of your time from then on out will be completely miserable if you do not. Once you're categorized as what people call lame or whatever, it's it's going to be hard to come back from that. I've seen it happen once, and I'll talk about that here in a minute. But pretty much the basic things are if somebody calls you the B word, if somebody calls you in a room to fight, if somebody ever puts their hands on you, if somebody comes up and they try to do that thing where they get nose to nose, well, first off, don't let anybody ever get that close to you. You need to keep them at an arm's distance away. And if they bump into your hands one time, it, that's one time too many and it's time to go. And in terms of situational awareness, you know, um, if you think, if you, if you think that you can't really beat the person too bad and they're probably going to get the best of you and you might get whooped and you're probably going to get whooped and you're probably going to end up in the hole, it's best to go ahead and beat them up in a more public place. Because if you do it in a cell and they knock you out, well, who knows what they're going to do to you when they knock you out. I've seen people do it in the kitchen. I've seen people do it in a number of places. So you can plan it out like that. And if you take off on the person, then it's going to let it be known, you know, you're not going to put up with it. There was one situation of a friend of mine that was really, it really sucked to see. Um, he did not want to fight the guy. It was over a dispute involving rule number two, don't gamble in prison. And this particular guy kept approaching him. And when it, the guy rushed him, he didn't have time to swing back because he tripped and fell and the guy jumped on him and beat him up. Since the guy jumped on him and beat him up and he wasn't able to get one punch off, not even swing, he was put in that category, that category of those people, and there was like this dark cloud that loomed over him. He never was able to get back into business in the, in the mix of certain things he's in the mix of before, and he just was, it was really sad to see. I think he probably would have fought if he'd known, hey, I'm in a fight. He would have fought. I, I thought of him as a person who did that. Pretty good-sized guy. He's a lot bigger than the guy who whooped him. But where he fell and he didn't get a chance to get a shot off, it didn't work out too good for him. And, you know, when you get in this fight, if you get in a fight, the best thing I can say is you need to leave a mark. You talk about, yeah, if you get whooped, it's the point that you fight. If you don't get a punch off, if you don't get one punch off, if you maybe flail like this and you get whooped up, on, it might be bad. It might not. <laughs> it might have been just as bad. There was a guy, Bolt. Bolt came from another prison, missing an eye. From what we heard was a prison fight in another prison where he kept getting in fights there. I saw him lose what I counted in total. In my notebook when I was listening to him with all the different people, 16 fights straight he lost. But he was willing to fight, and a lot of the times he was the aggressor in it. He was an unusual character. Back when, when I first got to prison, MP3 players came out after I'd been there for like a month. And he downloaded a bunch of gospel music on there. And you got different jobs in the prison. He was an orderly that would clean the TV room in the AM. There was another one that would clean it in the PM. It's a crappy $30, $40 a month job. But his job was to do it early in the morning. Well, it's a dormitory set in four quadrants, a regular building too, but when he would be wheeling that mop bucket back and forth, getting the stuff situated, he'd be singing this gospel music, sound like a blue tick hound dog, is what it sounded like, and he'd be like, Bolt, what's that, brother? It's seven o'clock. Oh, I'm sorry, brother. God bless you. Jesus be with you. And then, but in the same note, you get in an argument with him over the TV and F you mother F you don't know who I am I'll bust you in your head and he did he would sneak people he would sneak people and yeah he was known to sneak people but he'd get whooped now every time he'd get whooped he'd go right to the guards and he'd say I fail Bolt you didn't fall 
who did that to you? Nah, 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 I failed. And he'd go to the hole for two weeks. He wouldn't talk. They'd have to let him back out. Interesting fact, when you go to the hole and you don't get charged with something, if you get in trouble, you lose your sale. But where he kept going to the hole, but they couldn't charge him with anything. He was just beat up and healing up. He got his sale back. So every time somebody moved in his sale, there were times that he got out of the hole from getting beat up and there was somebody new in his sale. They moved in there and he'd push the paperwork and raise and complain. They had to give him a sale back. I seen him get in a fight after getting in the hole about somebody new being in a sale when he got back. But people knew they were going to have to fight him. They knew they were going to have to fight him. I had an incident with him one time over something. I was like, oh, Lord, I'm going to have to. And I went and, you know, talk, and, and when I talked to him, you know, I said, well, come here. We need to talk. He's acting weird. I was watching for him to sneak me. And I said, man, I said, we've been, we've been sitting in this TV room. We've had a good many conversations. Uh, one of our conversations was one day he looked back at me and he said, you know what the secret is to smoking crack? And I said, not Bolt, what's that? He said, you young people don't know. But what you got to do is take your two shots of liquor, then smoke your crack. That way, when the crack wears off, that liquor hits. Then you won't be smoking all this stuff. See, they don't know. I know. I said, well, thank you for that advice, Bolt. But, you know, just in general, I'd always been friendly with him. But he kept trying to put it on the Hallmark Channel every day of Christmas. I don't know. I'm not doing that. Um, so I said, listen, man, you've been trying to put it on the Hallmark Channel all day. You try to get out here and try to bug out all day. I said, how about we watch one Hallmark movie and then we turn it on? And I said... We don't want to have to get in a fight, man, do we? And he said, no, no, but I know you're a boxer or whatever, and I will fight. And I said, Bo, I know you'll fight, but come on, man. Do you, do you want to fight? He said, well, no, nah, but I will. I said, I know, and I will too, but do, do, you, real, do you want to? Is, is it worth us fighting? No, we've been friends for a minute now. And calmly de-escalate, you know. No, neither one of us had said anything. Now, there's certain lines. If he'd called me a name, a B word, something like that, I went ahead and had to do what I had to do regardless. And as bad as that sucks, because he was like 60 years old, missing an eye with a bad back. Um, but there are certain things you have to do. It didn't get to that point, though. And in that particular case, we were able to, I went over there and talked to him, you know, and I was like, oh, Lord, what's going to happen here? I was, I was ready to just tie him up and just hold him until he calmed down, you know, maybe put him to sleep, put him in his bed afterwards. I've done that before. But, um, <laughs> but you know, didn't get that to him. But, you know, like with a lot of other people, they knew might as well let it go because you're going to have to whoop him. And if you whoop him, you're going to go to the hole for 30 days. You're going to lose 30 days of your good time. And you're probably going to get sent to a higher security prison. I mean, that's or transfer. You know, it's, it's not a good situation. Now, the last case I'm going to mention was there was this guy, this dorky guy. He had glasses, and his glasses were always sliding. He's always like this, pushing his glasses up. He had a roommate that you've heard me talk about that we called Cricket. Cricket was the definition to play too much. He was a bully to people who, you know, you talk about people getting put in the lame category and all that, how their time gets hard. Those type of people fall victim to people like Cricket. He will mercilessly make fun of those type of people, okay? And he was funny. I was sort of kind of friends with him for a little bit, but he got a roommate. His dorky roommate, the guy who kept pushing his glasses up, who's like somewhere 5'10 to 6 foot, 180, but chubby at 180. Cricket was about 5'9, 200 pounds chubby. He had a little bit of muscle on him bunch of prison tattoos but he looked like a troll he had a gap between every single tooth and had these tiny little teeth you know i know i've got big teeth so i'm talking about somebody's teeth but his teeth these tiny it looked like he was like one of those little creatures off the lord of the rings but anyway he gave his roommate so many problems he talked about he ain't gonna be in there sitting in that room all day i ain't having that if the guy's sitting in there you know doesn't give you a minute when you come out of the shower to change whenever you get back from it if he doesn't do this but just to kick him out of the room tell me he's got to be out of the cell all day like it's your cell and run it like that i mean that's no type of person to live with and he was bullying that guy like that and he'd make fun of him mercilessly in front of everybody else it was it was bad he'd smack him in the head in front of everybody else push him and every every type of thing like that that was crossing the line that if anybody does to you, you're supposed to smack them. You're supposed to beat the hell out of them. You're supposed to do something on the spot. And because his roommate, this dorky fella, didn't do none of that, he got ridiculed. He got treated like crap by everybody. 
he was in it. His roommate, from what I understand, was in there for drugs. Now, see, just because you watch popular culture, so you know the, the TV shows about prison. If you get in a car right now, get a DUI, get in a wreck with somebody while you're drunk, you'll go to prison. They're dorks in prison. Everybody in there is not like some type of tattooed tough guy and everything else. There is every type of mix of weirdo uh, and everything else. And when I say weirdo, I don't mean chomo. I mean there's a lot of people who just weirdos that end up in prison. Okay, and this guy was just a weird guy, but. Man, didn't wasn't really a bad dude didn't seem like well cricket was drunk one day and continued mercilessly picking on this guy as he always did he never punched the guy oh but he'd smack him on the back of the head and stuff well, one day cricket was drunk and he'd done something in the cell i can't remember what it was it was some petty stuff cricket was going off on cricket started pushing him in front of everybody cussing it at him and the guy's just sliding his glasses back up well cricket's cussing at him and a wad of spit at, at a cricket's drunk spitty mouth came out and hit this guy in the face when the spit hit this guy in the face this guy took off on him it looked like he was swinging these big windmill punches that looked like they were thrown in slow motion but somehow everyone was hitting cricket would not fight him back and Cricket said, come on, come on, man. We're going to get in trouble. Come on, come on. They're going to see us. We're going to go to the hole. This guy didn't care. His give a damn was busted. He continued to throw these slow windmill punches, and somehow most of them were hitting Cricket. And went from one side to the other back towards the showers. The COs hit the what they call the deuces, the button, which alerts every other CO on the compound, come to this spot, there's an issue. They took them both to the hole, and where Cricket was drunk, his first mistake was not fighting back. His, well, his first mistake was getting drunk, okay? I say don't do drugs, don't gamble, don't mess punks is the three rules. Drinking counts with drugs. It's the same thing. He was drunk, which made him get the attitude, which made him pick on this guy. Then he put hands on the guy, so, you know, and then this guy, this guy lit him up with these slow motion punches that all seemed to find the target, which hilarious. But anyway, uh, they went to the hole, and Cricket being drunk, um, I can't understand why he did this, started yelling out the door, why am I in the hole? I didn't even do anything. I want to press charges on him. You want to press charges on him? You did not just say that. Well, of course, everybody on his range heard that and brought that back. He was not allowed to sit at his special tables from his little friend group anymore. He was treated as an outcast after that, complete lame. And the little dorky guy who he beat up, I mean, uh, who he always picked on, who beat him up. He had been put in this rare situation where someone gets categorized as a lame, as an outcast, as somebody who is a target for predators and everybody else to be extorted and whatever else, to having a comeback. He came back from a rare place that most people cannot come back from. And people were patting him on the back, shaking his hand, telling him they were proud of him. And he got his respect back. His balls dropped. He got his balls back. And, you know, from then on, it was a completely different story for him. And there are a number of things. You know, there's certain words, certain stuff. And if somebody goes in a cell and they throw their arms up, you have to go. You, you really have to go. You have to handle that. Um, if you don't, that's one of the things. If somebody calls you the B word, at the very least, even if somebody doesn't fight. I've seen certain instances where somebody says the B word and there's not a fight. But it's because the other person, and they don't lose respect, but the other person, like if somebody calls you that and you're like, if you, and say it, call them back. And then if they want to come forward, if you say, if you be, do something, then that's the only situation where I've seen like it wasn't lost as much. But then they kind of talk about both people for not having done something because they say both people should have handled that. So there's certain little things like that. And you know, you think about it too. If you go in a cell with somebody, are you capable of handling that person? Is this person going to do something to you when you're knocked out? Is it better to fight them in the open? Is it better to fight them behind a closed door of a cell, which you might not have help, which help might not come, which might something unthinkable might happen to you in there? So that's why sometimes people take off on people. They accept the consequence. They accept, yeah, I'm going to the hole. Yeah, I'm getting 30 days of good time taken, but I'm not going to put up with it, and I'm not going to have that on my name. And they go ahead and whoop them in front of everybody. Me personally, <laughs> I'm never going to fight in the hope. I don't want to go to the hole. You know, um, but that's also why I train four hours a day, six days a week. 
on bond for two years. I trained so then I didn't have to put up with people's ridicule, anything like that, try to find a way to weasel and work around the ways. I trained so, you know, people talk about wanting to become gangster and all this stuff, and, you know, I looked at it kind of, you know, just for what it was, okay? Respect is people are strong and people that could fight. Well, I got out there and started powerlifting, got respect because of that. But also, you know, I learned how to fight. <laughs> learned how to fight. You know, go figure. <laughs> it's To me, it was a simple problem to solve. Okay, well, if fighting equals respect, I'm going to go learn how to fight. So I trained like my life depended on it. Back then, we didn't have prison YouTube like there is today. We had Fleece Johnson and turned out Alabama. We didn't have prison YouTubers giving realistic advice like I'm trying to give on here. We had stuff that would scare the piss out of you, that would make you not sleep at night, especially me knowing that I was going to federal prison. So anyway, if you like the video, if you feel like I earned it, press the like button. If not, that is 15 minutes and 57 seconds of your life in which you will never get back, but I really hope you did because that would suck if you didn't. Y'all have a good one.